Hey everybody, this is Ken Haskins with WebKyrie.com and I wanted to give you a part two to the tutorial how to display dynamic images on your web pages. And in this part two video, I'm going to address a couple of things. And the first is the image path that we talked about in the previous video. And I also want to touch on the listing.php page. But first, let's go to the image path. Here on this page here, I have two images. One is being displayed using the full image path. That means that all of this before the file extension. And I have another image that is using a shortcut or a partial path. They're both in the same folder. And what you need to pay attention to is if you ever change the location of this particular web page and you put it in another directory um, that's you know n not equal to the directory uh, lo location that it's in what's going to happen is this image here will not show up because this file location or this path is incorrect for example let's take the uh, partial image path let's get out of this first and let's take this partial full partial image pass dot PHP file and let's take it up to another folder so we're gonna take it up another level and we're gonna update and let's bring it up again okay everything is here for us everything on the surface looks fine but let's take a look at it in Chrome. All right. You see what I mean? This image here is not going to uh, display on this page because this path is now incorrect. So, as a designer, you really need to pay attention to uh, the location of your files. Your files, rather. Uh, how you place this image uh, path there's no advantage um, you know really if you're not going to be changing around a lot of pages then use the shortcut it saves you from having to type in all of this information all the time but if you're going to be changing web pages uh, outputting them in different directories and things like that you know who knows what's going to come up you just need to pay attention to that so that way you don't lose the location of uh, you don't distort the web page by not having the image uh, display there, not display. So we got that out of the way and let's take a look at the second thing we wanted to talk about and that is the listing.php page and how does this page know to display all of the information dynamically that we uh, put in our database and how does it know to display different information so if I click here I get one uh, thing you know from a different picture different agent and so forth if I click on another I get different pictures I get a different agent and so forth how does that happen well here I created another page called listing.php and this is also a dynamic page. The difference here is this record set, if I click on it here, you're going to see that the information in this record set is actually set to be filtered by the ID. Now that should look familiar to you because if we go back to our index page, when we wanted to um, make this a clickable link, an active link when we clicked on this folder and we set those parameters then we clicked ID here and we also selected ID so basically what's happening is this listing page is ready to receive all of the information from um, that we have in our database based on the ID so that's what you uh, really want to make sure happens when you're trying to link those pages together uh, dynamically 
Um, say for instance here, if we wanted to, we can do this mil a million ways, but let's say we wanted to sort this by city and state, or display this by city and state. And we can do that, and we're just going to type in the same information. Remember, those two things need to match. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to upload this to the server. Now, remember, this page is set up to receive the information based on the ID. So we would need to also change this page as well. So we'll need to filter this by the city and state. And we're going to upload both of them, bo uh, this file here to the server as well. And let's do a page refresh. We have all of our information, everything generally looks the same. And voila! We clicked on Phoenix, Arizona, and if you look at the top here, this page is displaying the city and state at the top. Um, you can also display multiple uh, things here. So let's go back, let's still set this up to display, to receive the information based on the ID. Let's hit OK. put it back to the server and let's change the parameters on this as a matter of fact what we're going to do is give it an additional parameter let's go by the ID there and let's select the ID hit OK OK and let's upload it to the server and let's go back. Okay, page refresh. And let's click on, let's say, Potomac, Maryland. And now, as you can see, this page is ready to receive the information based on the ID. The ID just happens to be at the end. And it also has the city and state. And, you know, if you're dealing with real estate or if you're dealing with things that have uh, multiple key information, it's just, you know, good you can have uh, that information there but you can see how easily it's displayed um, and it has these percentage marks here because you know we don't have spaces here but um, anyways as you can see it's uh, very easy very simple to do we change the parameters we can you know do anything we want we just need to make sure that let's just make this first instead we just need to make sure that the listing page or whatever page you're going to use to receive the information is speaking the same language as your host page. And so those are the two things I actually wanted to address. And as you can see here, the ID is four and now the city and state is last. So you can set your parameters any way you like, but you just need to make sure that this page that's going to receive the dynamic information is communicating with uh, the host page or the previous page so if you have any questions um, shoot me a message again thank you so much for your time thank you for stopping by and please subscribe